All right, this video is why you should not buy an AR-15. You should just build one. Not very difficult. You're gonna learn what each part is for on the gun, inside the gun, how each of those parts function together. And it's gonna make you know the weapon, know how to assemble and therefore disassemble the weapon. Not only this, but you'll know how to troubleshoot the weapon should a problem occur. Now, this AR that I built, I built just before shortages were happening. And I could tell that because this is one of the only, if not the only handguard I could get that was M-Lock and this length. See, the minimum barrel you can have is a 16 inch barrel. And man, I, at one point I knew exactly what every one of these parts on this gun were and I'm gonna try and walk through it all because you will gain such an understanding sourcing these parts, making a decision based on what you think you'll like or what you know you'll like. And if you want a reliable, quality, trustworthy, proven weapon or something that's a little more budget, but will still get the job done. This build happens to be more of the proven high end, um, high budget. It's still budget, it's just higher uh, type of build, as you might be able to tell. Um, of course, you can make very frugal decisions, such as with the lower, the upper receiver. All of them are about created equal and aero precision. Finds a great niche in quality and cost efficiency. So you'll see a lot of people with these aero precision lowers. However, the pieces of the gun you need to depend on, like the bolt carrier group, I chose to go with this company called Toolcraft. Now I used to know a lot more about Toolcraft, but I do know that they supply major rifle ma manufacturers that then see service, oh, there's a bunch of cat hair all over this, in wars. Toolcraft is a very proven name. When you look at bolt carrier groups, you'll probably see that Toolcraft actually sells to other pole guard groups and then stamp their name on it. It's a very good one. Trigicon, another proven company. These aren't the cheapest options, but they're reliable. And it's what I want in a gun is reliability, not having to worry about any weak point in the gun. I spent money on this stock. It's a B5. Sop mod system stock. BCM gunfighter grip, I believe. Man, I wish I knew this stuff. VL Tor, adjustable um, buffer tube, spring coat greens, spring inside. Other pieces that don't matter as much. Maybe this castle nut you could source from somewhere else. Although this one, this little, uh, Gosh, I wish I knew what this was. It's some kind of plate. It has a quick detach back here. Here's a Ray, Radian Raptor charging handle. These are all great parts. Magpul backup sights. Can't go wrong. One of the reasons I chose these polymer sights, because with drop tests, these are shown not to need re-zeroing should they fall on the site. The great backup sites. I prefer to use a red dot or maybe someday a low powered variable optic LPVO as my main site. However, I don't foresee any long distance engagements at this current property I'm living at. A red dot will be just fine. Especially one that has a battery life that I can leave on and replace once every year, once every two years and not have to worry about this turning it on or anything like that. Dust cover, not so important. The handguard. It's important you buy a light but robust handguard. The mounting system will also come into your decision-making process. This is M-Lock, which is one of the newest variations of securing your accessories onto the barrel. Most things have an M-Lock variant and you can even buy rail attachments to fit on here 
should you need um, a 1913 rail or something like that, Picatinny, whatever you need, there are adapters for it. This is by ALG Defense which is the sister company to Geisley. You've probably heard of Geisley, a super Gucci gun builds. ALG Defense being apparently his wife's company. I'm not too sure, but this wasn't too expensive at around $140, I believe, for the purple version. And I can look up the length for here in a second. Quick detach port, regular A2 birdcage muzzle device. In this, this is by Caveman, or it's called a Caveman. And this is a piece of heat sensitive silicone or some sort of material that will light up red and change color when the barrel is too hot. This is very cheap and effective. I highly recommend you get one of these. What's underneath it though is a little more important. This is a Criterion barrel. I can give you the exact part specs. But 223 wild, 1 8 twist. You'll need to look up information about what twist you might want. 1 8, 1 7, I think 1 7, maybe 1 6 exists, but 1 7 is considered tight, 1 8 is fine, 1 9, you start getting a little less rotation on the bullet as it's traveling through here. Another thing you'll need to know is the buffer tube hard to see in here where is that guy aha uh -huh. wish i could turn on flash but oh well you can see that silver thing in there is a tube that brings gas from behind the bullet as it travels here hits a gas block gas from the cartridge propellant goes through the gas tube back into here, touching or pushing the bolt carrier group back, loading the next round. I believe I've chosen a carbine length buffer tube and gas block, but I'll have to double check here. Trigger, this is a LaRue MBT 2S, I'm pretty sure that's what this is called. And it's a great trigger. You're gonna find a lot of people telling you a certain trigger is better than the rest. As soon as you read enough posts saying, oh, this Geisley trigger is the best, this LaRue trigger is the best, this whatever trigger is the best, you'll find top five brands that are constantly repeated over and over and over again. You could drive yourself crazy trying to find what trigger you should buy? I'm telling you, pick one of the top five that are recommended, top three, whatever. You'll be happy. Magazines. You're gonna need a few of these. These are just PMAX. They're $12. 30 round capacity. This says the Gen 3 window, which apparently has reinforced feed lips on the top to prevent them bending. You're going to want a budget for like 20 of these because, man, it's nice to have these loaded and not having to reload them at the range. So I've got the gun here. What have I missed? Trigicon MRO, kind of went over that. Magpul, M Magpul MBUS Pro backup sights. Or maybe these aren't the Pro. I think the Pro are metal. Um... You're gonna need to factor in the cost of a riser, quick detach system to go on your rail. Light, important. It's extremely difficult to choose a good light. What you need to know is lumens is not the entire equation. You need something with candela. So make sure you're taking into account lights that at least specify what candela they're rated for. Cloud defensive, Optimized Weapon Light, or OWL, O-W-L, happens to be a great light. I love how this thing works. Let's go over the entire part list that I have pulled up on my computer here. And I can make this available. So, when I was first wanting to build a gun, I had no idea what parts were in a gun. 
one thing I didn't know was that a buffer tube, a buffer tube back here has a spring and a little thing. I got a, a weight inside of it. That weight is responsible for pushing the bolt carrier group back into place and loading another round. But what causes this to go back? I didn't know that either. There's a gas block in here that sends gas through a tube back into the upper receiver, pushing the bolt carrier group back, which then cycles the gun. There are plenty of videos of a cut through or a skeleton transparent view of how an AR works. Most guns work the same way. The AK gas tube pushes back a piston, reloads. That one up is used just a spring that's loaded up in here. This one's slightly different, but the, pretty much the same concept of an automatic or semi-automatic weapon. So parts you'll need to think about. Lower receiver and lower parts kit. LPK, they'll sell you one with a trigger. They'll sell you one with a, a, a pistol grip or a grip and other things you might find. The basic lower parts kit that I ordered was an Aaron Precision or CMMG lower parts kit, 40 bucks. Very simple, because I wanted a different grip and I wanted a special trigger. The trigger and grip that comes with the lower parts kit is probably fine, but it's not what I wanted. Moving on, the lower receiver. Now, I believe I probably chose a blemished one. Aero Precision will sell blemished receivers that have nicks on them. So will BCM or Bravo Company uh, USA. Um, other companies have blemished products. I don't, I did not see a single blemish, miscoloring, anything on here. They still pass quality control, but they are blemished. So maybe they don't pass quality control. Anyways, they're still fine, robust lower receivers. And it's not so much the lower that you need to care about, it's the upper receiver. Although counterintuitive, this is the part that you need to register. The upper receiver houses the explosion and all the inertia here from the bullet. It's gonna be rocked around more. This is what you need to keep lubed, keep clean. The rest of the gun is important, but this sees up most of the action. Fire control group, MBT2S, I was right about that. Upper receiver, aero precision, probably also blend. Forward assist assembly. What is the forward assist? Some people will tell you it's not necessary. This is the forward assist. Some uppers do not have that. You'll see an aero precision upper that does not have a forward assist. It's this thing here, which is a spring loaded thing that you can tap or slam just in case this bolt carrier group does not come all the way back up into position after cycling around. These notches on the side of the bolt carrier group catch a little thing, <laughs> a, a rod in here that you'll slam and it'll catch these and push it a little bit forward. <clears throat> you'll see reports of people saying they've never used it, but hey, it's standard and I wanted it. And there's a reason it was designed with it. <clears throat> dust cover not super important but you should have one bolt carrier group <clears throat> toolcraft nickel boron nickel boron is important the type of material that exists or is coated or whatever is made this bolt carrier group must have a slow coefficient of friction because it is sliding in and out of here very rapidly the more friction you have, the less likely, the more likely it is to be caught or cycle slower, resulting in a slower rate of fire. Nickel boron coating happens to have an extremely low rate of friction, so do not stray away from that material. Look up something else. If something else happens to have a lower coefficient of friction, maybe you should go with that. But check it out. There's a reason it looks like this. Buffer kit, you'll need a buffer, which is a weight, a tube, which is this, and a spring and an end plate or castle nut. That's what these are called. In here, this is the buffer tube. There's a spring, a long spring that is greased and a set of weights. Maybe it's one little piece of weight with a couple weights inside. And that's an important weight for the gas pressure of your gun. 
bullets. They're cartridges. They have propellant in here that will expand. That pressure is determined by how hot the load is, you might hear. That will come back and create a certain level of pressure for this. Suppressors and other muzzle devices might alter the amount of pressure that it comes back and is responsible for cycling again. You may need to change the weight depending on your load, your cartridge, your muzzle device. Things like this that I've learned by building the gun are so important. I believe I went with an H2 kit? No. H5. No. <laughs> A2 was recommended. It seems like A4 will work with everything. A4 weight, only weight in stock anywhere. So I probably went with A4. That's fine. Maybe A5. I don't know. The tube, the spring, end plate, and castle nut. This nut, you'll need a specific tool for, called a castle nut tool or castle wrench, something like that. And I went with a Magpul <coughs> tool that happened to be like $80, but it works. Then what you'll need is called a punch. And what you'll do is you'll stake the castle nut by pressing into it, spring-loading a metal rod to then move some of the metal back into the end plate or vice versa, keeping this castle nut from rotating off. This is the end plate with a quick detach. Moving on. Uh, bullet carrier group. Toolcraft nickel boron. What do you want? All right. Uh, $140, buffer kit, we've done this. Charging handle, Radiant Raptor. These were one of the things that were very out of stock. People could not find Radiant Raptor charging handles for whatever reason. It's an ambidextrous charging handle. Normally it's just on one side, but with ambidextrous ones, there is another piece that is linked to the other side. So they'll both go back when you pull it. Oh my gosh. So the left side is the normal side. The right side is linked and will go back as well. Got so much grease on my hand from this buffer tube. Ugh. What's next? The barrel. This is something you'll have to do a lot of research on too. At the time, LaRue was a great barrel for no apparent reason. Hansen Ballistics Advantage was a fine barrel and Criterion made an excellent barrel. <clears throat> I went with the LaRue barrel at first. However, they were so back ordered, I never got an email and ended up canceling my order. Eventually, I was after calling customer support a couple times because they took my money. Eventually, I found Criterion, which is similarly rated, but has more of a public available barrel making process, whereas LaRue is more proprietary and they don't leak as many details. However, the testing shows these are very comparable. Comparable. Criterion usually has a discount code available. So I went with them. I think it was 250 after the discount on a normally 300 or over $300 barrel. Mid-length gas, nitride barrel. You'll need to look at cold hammer forging, nitride, all these things, twist rate, a lot of it matters. A lot of it doesn't matter as much as you think it does. Go with a company that is trustworthy, reputable. You might spend more money, but a barrel is a good thing to spend money on. Mid-length gas. The length of the area before the gas block will determine what length gas system you have. There's full length, carbine mid-length short i don't know where they are and that was probably wrong however my research showed mid-length will cycle most everything cycle being keep the correct pressure from the round back into here to cycle the next one while also not being too hard on recoil might be all right with suppressors it's a good middle ground to go with the mid-length however do your own research as usual Oh. 
gas tube. Um, as you can see, these were canceled. BCM gas tube, I'm not sure if I even use that. I might have an extra one. Gas block, there are gas blocks that are adjustable. There are some that are not. I went with a non-adjustable version. I do not have a suppressor. I run basically the same loads. They're not hand loads or anything. And it seems to work just fine. I've heard adjustable gas blocks are a pain, especially if you have a hand guard that will not give you access to the gas block. You can see the gas block right there underneath. That's a screw. And funny story about the gas block. When I first shot this weapon, it cycled three times and then would not cycle. And I knew it was the gas block. I had not torqued it down to the correct torque specification. It had moved. It was not allowing the gas to come back to cycle the next round. I only knew that because I built the gun and knew how it was supposed to function. ALG 13 inch M lock handguard. Barrel wrench was not included because that's dumb. Uh, BVAD system enhanced top my butt sock. This had great reviews and is extremely comfortable. I'm very happy I went with this. It was a more expensive butt stock. There is storage here, I believe, but I can't get it open anymore because I'm weak. And no, it's just very comfortable. It's, it's adjustable. It fits with the Viltor um, stock system. Excellent. So aside from that, BCM Gunfighter Grip. Seems to be a grip that's highly favored. It's got storage in the bottom where I keep some, um, what's in there? I think a, oh, it's the tool to take off the flashlight and then a battery for this. Muzzle device, uh, you can get a muzzle device from anywhere. Uh, the cheapest way to go is just a flash hider and a couple washers for it. Backup sights, rear sight, front sight, MRO, I did get an Aimpoint Pro because I was trying to test the two to see what I like better, the MRO versus the Pro. Many, it was a split. Many people like the MRO, many people like the Pro. I tend to like both of them. I have the Aimpoint Pro in my AK and the MRO on this AR, obviously. They're both just as easy to adjust. They both give a clear sight picture. This one has a larger, um, I think it's called aperture. This lens is a little larger, you get a bigger picture. It's not as long, so I don't know. They're, they're very similar. Um, this one takes more standard batteries. That's my only pro to this Trijicon MRO over the Aimpoint. The Aimpoint has different batteries that are, are harder to find. That's it. But you find them, you order them, you're good. Uh, da, 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 da. Sling, I got a sling that I don't ever use. It's a great sling. It's got a little quick adjuster. Uh, seeing a silencer, which don't even work. Um, detaches, magazines. I got, I have way more than three now. I've got about 20 of these 30 rounders and maybe five 40 rounders. Magpul have been proven. They work well as mag. They're one of the most, if not the most popular mag for AR-15. And then tools. You'll need to budget a lot of money for tools. Uh, the armor's wrench that had the castle nut tightening thing. Uh, this one's the top of the line one, so you could get a cheaper one for sure. Clevis pin, that's for installing detents that come in the lower parts kit. A detent is a small little metal thing that will hold in Gosh, if I could even find them right now. Where is that? Ah, oh, these. These are pins that hold in the lower and upper receiver. And I should actually just take this apart. Let's set this down for a second. Oh, make sure it's unloaded. And back to the action. So this pin and this pin pull out to separate the lower from the upper part of the gun. This is really cool. I wanted to make sure I loved the lower so I could swap on a different upper in the future. Maybe one that takes a different, you know, maybe it's shorter and it has a 22 LR bolt carrier group and Maybe I want one with 
the shorter barrel and silencer, I don't know, but the lower, it's nice to swap this in and out. However, back to the pins, that one, the thing that holds these in is a small spring and a little piece of metal called a detent. You will need a cotter pin, or you will wish you had a cotter pin if you don't have one, to install these. So there's a little track, <laughs> and man, they will go flying. I highly recommend a second lower parts kit with extra detents or what they call an oops kit because they will go flying and you should wear eye protection. One hit me in the face. It's called a clevis pin, not a cotter pin. Um, center hole punch. That's for staking the castle nut, which I showed you these marks here. That's the ugliest part of the gun and I'm ashamed of it. Just kidding. Punch set. Um... What is this for? I believe I purchased this to punch out the dovetail sights on my handgun. A roll pin set, uh, similar to a punches, but they have um, a small divot on the end, I believe. You're gonna have to look these up. Uh, bev block, I never actually ended up using this, but the bev block is useful to grip if you don't have a vise or you'll need a vise and then the bev block to grip the lower receiver while you're wrenching on it, uh, grip the upper receiver, these kinds of things to make it easier to install parts. You don't necessarily need it. It will probably make it easier. I built this without using it. It is still in the box, but something to consider. And then absolutely you will need a go or no go gauge for the specific cartridge that your barrel is built for caliber, the specific caliber. This gauge will tell you exactly the spacing that you have in here between the bolt carrier group, um, the feed ramps in the barrel and the barrel. This space is extremely important because if you have extra space in there, you'll have problems. If you don't have enough space in there, it won't lock back. People's guns have exploded, and part of the reason might be that their headspace is wrong. This is an important safety thing to check, is the headspace of your gun. A go gauge and a no-go gauge. The go gauge will lock successfully. The no-go gauge, you do not want to lock successfully. Please do your own research, because I may be misspeaking right now. Look up what each gauge is intended for, why exactly you need both of them, how to use both of them, and make sure you get the correct caliber, cartridge, whatever, for your barrel. This is 223 Wild. You will need to look up charts, the headspace between 556, 223 Wild, 223. What is an acceptable headspace? What is too much? What is too little? Order the correct gauges to ensure you're not going to install a part that has failed manufacturer tolerances, like maybe this bolt carrier group was made a little bit too short or a little bit too long, a little bit too fat, a little bit too skinny. And those gauges will tell you that you are good to go before you fire your first round. There's no guessing if this gun is going to explode in your face. So those are important. This was extremely hard for me to find. It took me hours of research to find exactly where I could buy these and oh my gosh, I finally found them after looking on eBay, looking on all these private manufacturers, websites, like the actual climber website was out of stock. So many of these are out of stock. I almost didn't get them, but I finally found them and ordered them. And I'm so glad that I did. I used them once. And when I build another gun, I will use them again. Maintenance. And also tools, because you'll need this Molly Synthetic Mil-Spec Barrel Nut Thread Grease 2 ounce jar. It's AeroShell 33MS. It's grease that goes on specific parts of your gun. You'll want to watch the Midway USA How to Assemble Your Lower, How to Assemble Your Upper videos, and they will tell you where to use this. I believe it goes on the spring in the buffer tube and a couple other places like these pins on a couple specific parts of the trigger and in a couple other places that are moving around. And it's also great grease for sprinkler heads because it's super, super greasy. Uh, I've never used this cleaning solvent. Cats, stop chewing on the 
freaking cord. It's not yours. Okay. Break free CLP. I use this stuff a lot for other things that aren't just guns. Clean loop protect. Break free is the only one trusted by Arsenal and <laughs> They say in their warranty card, you must use break free CLP when maintaining your gun. Any other product will void the warranty. It works. It's good enough for me. I use it to clean a lot of stuff. Fuck off, cat. All right, I'm sorry for that little outburst. Okay. Cleaning patches, frog loop CLP is basically just coconut oil. I looked up some rusting. Um, this day at the range link will show you how different CLPs performed on metal after a period of time. Frog loop happened to be the one that did not rust. I ordered some of that. It works good as lube for other things. Ammo. You're gonna have to learn a lot about ammo. Ammo prices suck right now. There's a shortage. You'll need to know Boat Tail, Hollow Point, all these different acronyms, what grain, the weight of the bullet. I got a bunch of different stuff just to make sure everything cycled through my gun. Pretty much everything is good. You'll need to look up steel versus brass. Steel seems to be okay, but leaves more residue in the gun. And Densed part list. I will share this because this was very helpful to me and you can just empty stuff out of these columns. Make sure you ha keep all the bold ones. And what I did was I marked it green, this column when I had ordered everything in this section, for example, the barrel section or the buffer kit section. And then I marked it red when it was delivered to my door so I could keep track. I ordered from like 14 different manufacturers and they all came in 14 different times. And then I was finally able to build my gun. I hope you learned something from this video. Um, this is my first time building a gun and I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. It's a very, very fun time to shoot. I do keep it clean. I shoot it regularly. And it's just a lot of fun to know how to build a tool, dissemble a tool, use a tool, troubleshoot the tool, to use the tool to the best of your ability, really. And it was it was a lot of fun doing it. Um, how, were, I, were I to do anything differently, I would... You know, I'm not sure I would have done anything differently except for not underestimated the cost that this was going to be. This entire cost was just over $2,000. And I believe that's bef that's definitely before the flashlight, which was 300, might have been before this, which was 500 used or 400 used. These parts add up. dollars $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $